want to thank you for this morning, for the opportunity to be here in your presence. We commit this service to you, O oh God, that you will take all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. That you may give us the wisdom and the strength for the facing of this hour. Lord, we pray that we may heal our utterances to your divine inspiration. That you may speak to us, speak through us, and help us to hear from heaven. And Lord, that the words of our mouth and the collective meditations of all of our hearts will be acceptable in your sight. This is our prayer in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We we'll start with a hymn that says, Nilipo Fika Goligota. I ask you to join us. We sing this hymn unto the Lord. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together as we do this hymn. Yeah. 
to ask the Lord to reign in this place this morning. The song that says Atawali.
Raise your voice to heaven and sing. Niwe, we, niwe, we. Usi e shindoa, usi e shindoa. Niwe, we, niwe, we, Baba, niwe. Why don't we just lift our burdens, our worries, the things that concern us to him? There is no one we can compare to him. Lord, we come before you, dear Redeemer, that you may lay off, King of glory, things that worry us, mighty one of Israel. We come to you with burdens. Indeed, burdens are lifted at Calvary. We pray in the name of Jesus.
bless your name for Jesus knows all about our struggles he will guide till the days there's not a friend like the and declaration this morning that you know us king of glory by our names you know all about our struggles you'll guide us through till the end of the day we are grateful king of glory that no circumstance that we are going through is new to you king of glory you are the god of providence you are in control king of glory of every aspect of our lives we pray in the mighty name of jesus that this assurance king of glory will give us confidence and hope to continue living for you loving you and serving you we commend ourselves into your hands once again as we listen to your word that you may speak to us in a special way once again. We pray in the name of Jesus that that which you've started in us, King of Glory, will be sustained through to completion with the help of your Holy Spirit. And so once again as we listen to you, King of Glory, through our chaplain as ministers, we pray in the name of Jesus that you may minister to each and every heart, King of Glory, lifting up every burden in the mighty name of Jesus and causing us to experience the liberty, King of Glory, the redemption and the revival that only comes from above. Be with us as we start through to the end. Be with our chaplain as ministers and may each one of us be blessed and ministered to in a special way because we came. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's appreciate the worship team as they take their seats. You can also have your seats. Praise the Lord. It's great to see each one of you in chapel. I just have a few notices to put across before I bring on chaplain to continue with the last session of his series this week. One is that tomorrow we will be having our grace groups. And so we request all of us to go and check the notice boards for those of you who may not have been here last Friday to be allocated to various grace groups. We've pinned lists on the chapel notice board so you can go and check your grace group and then the leaders will get in touch with you. Uh, we will ask all the leaders to contact their members and for our new students, we kindly request that if you have not found your grace group leader or you don't know the grace group you've been allocated to, or tomorrow you are having difficulties to allocate to, to find your grace group, kindly come outside chapel so that we can guide you, so that you can start on with your grace group members. So the lists are pinned. We will also pin another list for grace group leaders, their contacts, and where they will be meeting tomorrow so that it can guide you as you try to find them.
then this afternoon we will be having a, a, a meeting with the heads of departments for all church workers. So the respective church workers or representatives of different departments that serve here in chapel, we will be meeting you at 3.30 p.m., as you may have seen in the email that was sent from Pastor Manyara. Uh, that is the head of worship team, media, hospitality, CU chair, vice chair, secretary, and treasurer, and other departments like ushering, all the church workers. Just find representatives or leaders from your de various departments and let them join us for that meeting at 3.30 p.m. Then tomorrow we will be having our Christian Union Fellowship, and so we invite as many of you as will be in campus to join for that Christian Union Fellowship. This coming Sunday will be a special Sunday. We will be having what we call the graduation Thanksgiving service. So this is a service where we call all our graduates and we send them to the, to the church. They are commissioned and sent to, to the church to go out and serve in the church and in the society as the salt of the earth and as the light of the world. And so we invite all of us to join us for our graduation Thanksgiving service this coming Sunday. We look forward to having you and to being ministered to in a special way. Uh, to our new students especially who have not joined ministries here in chapel, there is opportunity for you to join and to serve with us, either in the worship team, in the media team, as part of the ushers, uh, in the prayer and intercessory meetings, or to plug in in any of the ministries in the Christian unions. And so we encourage you who wants to join but has not found opportunity to do so, to try your best and join maybe in this coming week so that we can serve together. Amen. Amen. So why don't you join me in putting your hands together and bring on chaplain to share God's word. Yesu ajua shida zetu. Join me. Aweza kutuongoza hapa na ra. Fiki kama Yesu, you peke. I would like to greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Apologies for that hesitation, but we would like to invite um, some leaders of our couples fellowship. We would like to pray for them and bless them so that they can help to coordinate us as an institution and as a community in enhancing marriages at Africa International University. Uh, we anticipate that members of staff and students who are married will find expression in this uh, fellowship, the couples fellowship. In the days to come, it is not a new fellowship, but we are relaunching it so that it can be invigorated and so that it can be useful in the days to come. And so Leonard and your team, if you are there, kindly come. We want to pray for you. Come right here. Don't ask where the ladies are. Uh, <laughs> the ladies are right behind them. And so... You know, sometimes people sit down to wait to be, <laughs> uh, to wait to find what God is saying, but other times people look out for what to do for God. And these dear ones led by Brother ne uh, Leonard, please put up your hand, and uh, Pastor Akabok, and uh, Mugo, and 
and uh, Alpha, where is Alpha? And Alpha, and uh, our sister who? Hmm? Yes, that name gave me problems yesterday, <laughs> and I never recovered. Where is Giselle? Okay. So this, this team, plus a number of others who are willing and available, will help us to coordinate the work of couples fellowship. And they have told me in secret, but I will tell you publicly, that uh, they have a retreat this Saturday at a very serious place that many of you probably uh, have not been to in the neighborhood here. And so please, get in touch with them, support them, pray with them, encourage them, and participate in the couples fellowship. Some of the tidbits that uh, trouble your, fam your family or your relationships can just be sorted by asking someone else, how do you normally deal with your wife? How do you normally deal with your husband? And things like that. Let's believe and pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the very singular privilege to participate in the enhancement and enrichment of families in this institution, in this country, in this continent, and elsewhere in the world. We thank you for the dream. We thank you for the desire. We thank you for the willingness. We thank you for the availability to coordinate this work. We pray that you bless the work that this team is going to do. And we pray that you bless the families, the marriages, the couples that are going to benefit from the enhancement and the fellowship therein. And so we commit this group to you. And we commission them before you for the work that you have given them. That in the way in which the six, the seven were commissioned to be able to deal with the concerns of the families and community, they will find expression in so doing. But as they do it, dear Father, endow them with the power of your spirit, with wisdom from on high, with the power that comes from you. We pray that when they serve you, they will never lack the resources that accompany the ministry and the service to which you have called us. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you very much. Our reflection this morning, a continuation of the Holy Spirit as an agent in our witnessing process, as the Holy Spirit as the one who prepares us to be witnesses for Christ. And this morning, I have picked another two characters to just compare as we uh, discuss this message this morning. And we want to welcome all who are joining us virtually. Just know that we notice whenever you visit uh, that the site and uh, are able to participate with us in our services. We acknowledge all of you and we are so excited that many of you have been finding time uh, between 10 and 11 to tune in and be part of what God is doing at Africa International University. We have actually noticed that uh, the virtual audience sometimes are, are many more than the physical audience in this chapel. And we do not take that for granted. We want to acknowledge all of you and thank you for logging in and joining us. And so the physical audience here, can we give a hand clap to our virtual audience? Wherever they are. Thank you. We have talked about four characters in the last two days. The first two characters were people that uh, were prepared by the Holy Spirit for the assignment that they had to bear witness for God. That was Isaiah the prophet and Jeremiah the prophet. God, through his spirit, dealt with their inadequacies, dealt with their concerns, dealt with their fears, dealt with their sin, dealt with their uh, innuendos, and God was able to use them all the same. 
And so by the Spirit of God, they were prepared for the assignment that was before them. A very difficult assignment of delivering God's message and bearing God's witness among a stiff-necked people and a hard-headed people. And God promises them and God assures them he would be with them through the labyrinths of ministry. The second uh, pair of uh, characters that we looked at, you remember, were Stephen, the apostle, and Paul, the apostle. And you realize that Stephen was able to bear witness in very unique power of the spirit, performing miracles, and yet he was working in a rather mundane ministry in the church, giving food to complainants, giving food to people who are being fed but complaining. You feed them, they complain. You give them food, they complain. They don't see what they have received, they only see what is left that has not been given to them. And so Stephen is given such a difficult assignment to provide charity to those who complain more than are grateful. And the Apostle Paul was another hardcore criminal who was destroying the church with his own hand and with his own sword. And the Lord waylays him on his way to Damascus and makes him into a saint. And we agreed that none of us is too far gone for God to catch up with them. God catches up with people. Sometimes it's better to surrender to God before he catches up with you. Because somewhere along the way, if God does not catch up with you, you will run pell-mell down the street into hell with your eyes open and your, your head functioning. And sometimes those who are running to hell run faster than those who are running to heaven. The road towards hell is very slippery. And it facilitates your movement even when you do not want to go at that, that speed. The fact that you are willing to go to hell is enough for the speed to increase. And so today, we would like to look at two other characters. That is Jesus Christ himself and the Apostle Paul. And, uh, sorry, not the Apostle Paul. And the Apostle Peter. Jesus and Peter, how did the Holy Spirit facilitate or prepare these two characters for the witness for God and for Christ in their time? I'm not going to give a theological analysis of those two people, neither am I going to give the genealogy and character analysis of the twain, but I would like to limit myself just to what I see as what the Holy Spirit does in the life of Christ and in the life of Peter, so that they can bear witness for God and for Christ in a society that was bedeviled with wickedness, sin, and evil. And so, I would like to read from the book of Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. It's a very interesting passage, but the short of Luke chapter 4 is that it has two, uh, it has more stories, but two specific ones for our concern this morning. One is that Jesus is baptized by John in the earlier chapters, and then the Holy Spirit comes upon him at baptism, and God confirms that the Holy Spirit has come upon Christ when the, 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 the dove rested upon him, and the Holy Spirit came upon him, and there was a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And then Jesus comes out of the river Jordan, full of the Holy Spirit. And the scripture says in chapter 4, verse 1, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them, he was hungry. And then, of course, the story goes on of the temptations, the three levels of temptation, about food, about worship, 
and about power. And Jesus resists all that in the power of the Holy Spirit until the devil finishes with him and goes away to wait for another opportunity. And some of you have been tempted only once or twice and you think that the devil is through with you. He is not through with you. If you are not endowed with the Spirit of God, the devil is just waiting for an opportune time and he will show up again with a stronger temptation. Jesus was tempted and he was told, if you are the son of God, get this stone, be, let it become bread so that you eat after all you are hungry. Jesus says, man shall not live on bread alone. He is tempted again and he is told, if you worship me, all this territory that you can see and the splendor, authority and splendor will be yours. And Jesus says, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Again, he is tempted by another thing that the angels will, will, will guard you so that you don't knock your foot against a stone. And in verse 12, Jesus says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. And the devil then is through with his temptations. He lives to go and time him at an opportune time. And you know, some of you think that you overcame the temptation to sleep with Onyango, and you think that that was the last one. Njoroge is on the way. <laughs> and so if, if you do not subject yourself to the spirit of God, and you think that you can sit smart, and imagine that your history is sufficient for you to manage the, the, the future, you better think twice. The devil is just at the corner there, bringing a better one, bringing a more beautiful one, bringing a more sumptuous one, a more prestigious one. My friend, if you are not keen to identify yourself with the spirit of God, to be able to overcome the temptations that come your way, you will never bear witness for Christ. But in verse 16, verse, verse 14 and following in, John, in Luke chapter 4, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Holy Spirit. Again, the power of the Holy Spirit. And the news about him spread throughout the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood, up and re he, st he stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and he sat down. And the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. What was the scripture that was fulfilled? The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, and the story continues. But the final part I would like to read uh, before we m make our presentation from the word of God is in Acts chapter 10. This now is about the apostle Peter. In Acts chapter 10, this is another story that I like very much because it makes me feel like when you are bearing witness for Christ, you are not alone. In Acts chapter 10, from verse 34, please listen to this. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened 
throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around in good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was seen by all the people, but by witness, uh, he was seen not, he was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came upon all who had the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles for speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for more, a few more days. And this is the word of the Lord. Sometimes I enjoy just taking a good time to read the scripture. You know, there are many things that I may say and you don't listen to. But at least I know when we read the scripture, you know I'm not the one talking. It is the Lord speaking. And so these two characters for our reflection today, Jesus and the Apostle Peter. I will just quickly mention what I gather, for, I gather from the readings. One is that the Holy Spirit empowered the Son of God to bear witness about the things of God on earth. And Jesus himself says the Spirit of the Lord is upon him so that he can preach the good news to the poor. Preaching is an assignment of the Spirit. Bearing witness for Christ is an assignment of the Spirit. And you need that anointing of the Spirit if you are going to do so. But he does not stop there at proclamation. He says that the Spirit of the Lord is upon him also to bring healing to the brokenhearted. And you know there are people who are trained in counseling and in psychology. There are therapists and so on who are supposed to bring healing to the brokenhearted. But sometimes you imagine that it is by wisdom, it is by training, it is by knowledge, it is by experience. It is not by that. You need the Spirit of God if you are going to bring healing to the broken hearted. Otherwise, you will be broken yourself. To proclaim liberty to the captives and the sight to the blind. To open the prisons to those who are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. Bearing witness for Christ includes warning people about the wrath of God and the vengeance of God. You know, you can reject God. You can talk all things about God as you go along your pilgrim way. Talking about God as though he doesn't exist, as though he's irrelevant, as though uh, he is unknown. There are the people in the book of Romans chapter 1, there was an attempt to forget God. And the scripture says, when they attempted to forget him, when they chose to remove him from their memory, being obvious to them what God had done, then God got to a time where God also gave them up to their reprobate minds. They became insolent, proud braggarts, sinning and encouraging others to do likewise. Have you ever seen young people mobilizing people to go and sin? Do you ever see them? 
you walk around saying, saying, let us go and rev. Today I need more people. I, some, the other day I think I overheard someone trying to recruit some ladies. I was passing somewhere and I had overheard someone saying, let's go, let's go, just let's go. And I had a lady saying, no, I don't even have change of clothes. You know it is time to go and see. Let's go. Mobilizing people to go and see, my friend. Recruiting sinners. So people sin and they also encourage others to sin. You say, I've been sinning all along alone, but this time I need company. You form a companion of sinners, a company of evil. But that happens more when the Lord begins to let you go. He begins to let you go. You have become a hardcore, going farther and farther away from God. And the farther away you move from God, the nearer you move to the devil. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and God will draw near to you. The Holy Spirit should help you to bear witness, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, but also to warn the world against the anger and the wrath and the vengeance of God against the children of disobedience. And so the Holy Spirit also, according to the scripture that Jesus read, but citing from Isaiah chapter 61, what my other colleagues in the other fields have called divine exchange. to comfort those who mourn. Instead of mourning, you give them comfort. The Spirit helps you in your witnessing to bring comfort to those who are mourning. By the way, those of you who don't go to funerals, begin going to funerals if you are a spiritual person because the Holy Spirit will help you to bring comfort to those who mourn. You bear witness by bringing comfort to those who mourn. Divine exchange, as it were. You bring beauty instead of ashes. Where people are, are uh, smearing themselves with ashes and rolling on the ground because of the misery and the misfortunes, the predicaments and the circumstances of life. You bring beauty instead of ashes by the help of the Spirit of God. The scripture also says they are to bring the oil of joy instead of mourning. It appears the world is mourning a lot. The world needs joy. The world, the world needs comfort. The Holy Spirit will help you to bring the oil of joy instead of mourning. A garment of praise instead of a spirit of heaviness. And finally, a new generation is created. The planting of the Lord and the Lord is glorified. The Holy Spirit was upon Christ to bring that transformation, to bring that change, to empower and to enrich not only his proclamation, but also his engagement in the perplexities of people's life. The second portion that we have read is the portion in Acts chapter 10 and verse 44 and verse 34 and following. You know, sometimes preaching can become so tedious if you do not allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. By the way, that, pre that uh, p scripture that we read, Peter was preaching to how many people? You know, sometimes we imagine that the Holy Spirit will be involved if you are preaching to 300, 1,000 people, and the power of God will move. But we do not know that even in the grace group of only 12 people, of only 10 people, in that small group, that the Holy Spirit can surprise you there, right there as you serve tea, right there as you pray, right there as you fellowship. The scripture says that while Peter was still speaking, in a family, in a home, in the confine of a small place, with just a family and a few friends, while Peter was still preaching, was still speaking to them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they began to speak in tongues, my friend, the whole thing about salvation and the Holy Spirit were brought together at once plus baptism. When you allow the Holy Spirit to accompany you in your witnessing endeavor, you will not struggle to convince anyone. You will not struggle to persuade anyone. You will not be struggling to win the argument. 
You will not be struggling to bring the philosophy of religion. And you will not use the fallacies of life. The argumentum ad buculum. The argumentum ad hominem. And you try to persuade people by reason and by justification. But when the spirit of God operates in your life, you will begin to enjoy the fact that you are a witness for Christ. You will begin to know that you are sent there not to prove a point, but that you are sent there as an ambassador of Christ to declare the goodness of God. And Peter found himself in such a situation. He was struggling in, in Joppa, and at night, uh, not even at night, in the middle of the day at around 3 o'clock, when he was hungry and he was waiting for food, an angel of the Lord appeared to him and told him, just go. Don't call anybody a Gentile. Don't call anybody Watua Mataifa. Please go with those people and declare the good news. And so he comes to the house of a Gentile called Cornelius. And while he was there, the Spirit of God accompanied him. He had been in prayer. He had been looking upon God and saying, God, send me. I want to go as a witness, but not in my strength, not in my power, not in my knowledge, not in my experience, not in my ability, but I want to go and declare the oracles of God in the power of God. And so the Spirit brought vibrance to his ministry. The Spirit brought reality to his witness. The Spirit brought ability and endowment to his witness. But more of all, the Spirit overtook him. The Holy Spirit overtook him. You know, sometimes as you go door to door, house to house, room to room, one to one, mundu hu mundu, mundu hu mundu as you go. You know, this mundu hu mundu should not only be in political things, even the Christian things. You can go from one person to another, not telling them about anything, but telling them about Christ. That while you are away, the Lord saved my life. On the 28th of August, 1985, before my son who is here, was even born. He was a concept in my mind. Even in that time, that point in time, I met the Lord Jesus Christ. So when I tell you that I'm born again, I'm not joking. You are absent. And so when I say it, you have to believe it. And it is not subjective. It is real because I'm here. When you bear witness about what God has done for you, you will find someone, someone somewhere who is, who is struggling with the very things you struggled with. And your testimony is going to be the vindication. It's going to be the turning point in the life of that person. Just trust God that by his spirit he will endure you as you go. So that you do not keep quiet and be an embarrassment to the Christ who saved you. The Holy Spirit in John chapter 20, 21 and, and following. Then, Jesus, then said Jesus to them again, peace be unto you as my father has sent me. Even so, I send you. And when he had said this, verse 22, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins, whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. And, whoso, and whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. This is how serious it is. When you are walking by the Spirit, facilitated by the Spirit of God, when you declare, when you meet with circumstances, the power that God has put upon you avails the forgiveness of sin to those who are steeped in sin. And therefore, accompanied by the Spirit of God, who was to be among them, but later was to be in them, they are supposed to have been motivated by the Spirit. When the Spirit of God is in you, you will be motivated by the desire, the desire to see people change, the desire to see people come to Christ. And when you declare that they are forgiven, God will forgive them. In Acts chapter 4, 29 and following, verse 29 says, And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. This is to say that sometimes your witnessing is not going to be easy. The disciples prayed, Lord, behold their threatening and grant your servants that with boldness they may speak your word by stretching forth your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together 
and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak the word of God with boldness. You see how the Holy Spirit is involved there in empowering the disciples? Not that they had not received the Holy Spirit before, but they got to a point where their lives were threatened. They were in danger. The witnessing became hazardous. It became dangerous. And they went back to God. And they told God, fill us. Fill us with your spirit so that we may declare the word of God with, with boldness. And the scripture says the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. The Holy Spirit will give you the boldness that you need so that you rise up from your comfort and go out and look for that one person, not two, not three, that one person that is steeped in sin, that is waiting for someone, not to tell them about the miracles in heaven, but to tell them about what God, what Christ can do in the life of a young man, a student, a young person who is all out to seek God and say that, yes, you can be a first year, but with Christ in your heart. You can be a fourth year, but Christ, with Christ in your heart. Your testimony, motivated by the Holy Spirit, will be enough witness to the world. And it will surprise you what God can do when you obey him. And finally, in Acts chapter 5, verse 12 and following, by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's colonnade, in Solomon's porch. And of the rest, dust no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. And the believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and coaches that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow them. And there came also a multitude out of the cities around about unto Jerusalem, bringing the sick folk and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one of them. And when Simon Peter continued to preach the conviction of God, the power of God, came upon the people because where the Holy Spirit is, it is not about the preacher, it is not about the witness, it is about the truth. Declare the truth and leave the rest to God. The Holy Spirit will transform those meek words that you will speak into the power of God. And do not fear whenever you go to witness to pray for the needs of people, to drive out demons, to lay your hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. Go by the Spirit, and you will notice that the witnessing that you are engaged in does not belong to you, it belongs to God. As long as you are in resting position, you will never know that anything can happen. You saw these brothers and sisters come here? As long as you are in resting position, you will never even see the need to do anything. But when you rise up and you say, Lord, show me where I can make a difference, by your spirit, make me a witness for Christ at Africa International University and in every corner of the world. God will surprise you. You may be weak, you may be feeble, you may be like Isaiah, wondering how, where to start. You may be like Jeremiah, wondering how young you are. You may be like Stephen, facing the threat of death. You may be like the Apostle Paul, a hardcore criminal and sinner. You may be like Christ, the Son of God himself, but yet he realized he needed the empowerment of the Spirit of God to do the work of God. You may be like the Apostle Peter in the various circumstances, faced with the challenge of weakness, faced with the loss of boldness, and they call upon God, and the Spirit of God comes upon them afresh, and they find the vigor, the courage, the boldness to be witnesses for Christ. If you will be honest, you will be truthful, you will be willing, you will be available, I want to assure you that in the closet of your 
your prayer place, the Lord will endow you afresh with the Spirit so that you can bear witness for Christ in your room, in your hostel, in your classrooms, in the compound, in the campus, in your countries, in your homes, in your families, because of the Spirit of God in you. The Spirit will take over from where your strength wanes. At the point of weakness, God will translate your very weakness into strength. He says that my strength is made perfect in weakness. For when you are weak, then you are strong. And that strength is in the spirit of Christ. Let us believe and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you because you send us. Sometimes you send us to complicated places. Sometimes you call us and we see our own inadequacies and weaknesses. Sometimes you call us and we are doubting because we are young. Sometimes you call us and we are faced with threat the way Stephen was faced with it. Sometimes you call us and we categorize ourselves as hardcore sinners who cannot be changed. But God, we thank you for your spirit that breaks the heart of stone and puts upon us the heart of flesh. We thank you because you call us and you endow us with your spirit the way you called your own son Christ. In this baptism, you empowered him with the spirit. In his ministry, you empowered him with the spirit. You called the apostles, particularly Peter, and in his weakness as God, you translated his weakness into strength to the point that his witness was real. His witness was bringing even healing. Even his own shadow falling upon the sick. The sick would rise up and walk because your power was upon him. Spirit of God, empower us, prepare us, send us, use us, invigorate us, and make us the instruments of the witness of Christ, not only in this generation, but wherever you will send us. And if you are here and maybe you have been rejecting that whole voice of God sending you out as a witness, the demand of God upon your life, and you have been saying, I cannot make it, I am weak, I am not made of that material, God is confronting you this morning and saying, no, you must obey his voice. But when you rise up out of that situation, God will translate that weakness into strength and you will be that witness that God wants to use by the power of his spirit. And if you are here and in your mind and in your heart you are in doubt, but you are saying, Lord Jesus, I would like to be your witness, but start with me. Save me from my sin. Translate me from my hardcore life. Give me a new lease of life. Give me a beginning, the beginning with Christ. Save my soul. Restore my life and rescue my destiny. Dear Father, may that please you, that you will reach out to that person who is saying, Lord, come into my sphere and transform my life. As a show of that concern, You'd like to receive Christ as Savior and Lord. We do not have time, but we can spare a minute to pray with you. You are there and you are saying, maybe I am the one that the Holy Spirit is looking for. Maybe I am that witness, a potential witness that has never risen even to give his or her life to Christ. But God is challenging you this day to begin by giving, surrendering your life to him. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will use you if you say, Spirit of God, come and help me. Just put up your hand. I will pray as we close. And after this service, please come and see us. We will be happy to pray with you and fellowship even more. Anyone, just put up your hand. I want to pray as we finish. Thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may it please you to empower. May it please you to prepare. May it please you to use. May it please you to make us the instruments in your hand. Spirit of God, in the privacy of our time, empower us with boldness, with strength, and with power to do your will and to bear witness for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Thank you. Have a blessed day. God bless you for being here. Remember to attend your grace groups tomorrow and remember to attend our Thanksgiving service on Sunday at 10 a.m. Thank you. God bless you.